Hey, welcome back to Paul's Outdoor Academy. I appreciate you joining me for another video. Video. Today in this episode, I'm gonna be doing my three year review of my 2019 Triton 18TX. I purchased this boat brand new, and in case you haven't watched the previous two videos, I did a one year review and a two year review, and I would recommend that you go watch those before you watch this one. Just in case I mentioned something that I might have mentioned in one of those reviews, you'll know what I'm talking about. Let's get this started. I'm gonna pick the camera up and try to kind of position it around the boat as I go so that you can see what I'm talking about. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Let's get this thing going. And probably the number one thing that I want to mention has been this issue that I have had with these seats on this boat. If you watched uh, year one review, and I'm sure I talked about it in the year two review, I was having an issue getting this seat replaced under warranty. And hopefully you can see it has a crack in it here. That is not the original crack. I had this seat replaced and they replaced it under warranty, but it took one year to get my dealer to get me the correct seat to put in this boat. The dealer blamed Triton. Triton blamed the dealer. I blamed whoever on the planet because I was so aggravated that it took me so long to get this seat. When I finally got it in, they didn't charge me the price of the seat, but they charged me for installing it. In fact, they charged me uh, around $140 just to install the seat. And I had already taken the other one off and delivered it over there to them for photos and they still charge me that to put this one on. I don't think that was fair. I'm just not even gonna go into that. I don't jump up and down on these. I do fish quite a bit, but not a lot. This, I, I just think it's a poor design, to be honest with you. I'll never be able to get another one under warranty. I know that. So most likely what I'll do is, if I ever get tired of this, or it really starts to break down, I'll probably go ahead and have a uh, custom seat cover made for this so that it looks good because if you think about it, this foam is going to get some water in it when it rains or when I wash the boat. And so every time I sit down in this, especially if it continues to get worse and the seam continues to rip like it did last time, it's going to get my back wet. So that was the primary thing that I discussed in the original video that I was having an issue with. All right, so other than that, what else has gone wrong with the boat? The engine still runs flawless. Uh, the boat has no cracks. There's nothing going wrong with the boat as far as I can tell by looking at the hull. I haven't seen any damage uh, when looking inside the compartments. I will say that the one thing that I have noticed is there have been a few times that the cover that I keep on it has allowed rainwater to get inside of it if, we've, if it's really rained hard. It's allowed enough rain to get up inside of it that even though the carpet will dry when I open the storage bins, I'll find rainwater in a couple of those and it actually will not go away on its own. I actually have to get a towel and, uh, you know, sort of sponge that up as much as possible and then let the sun dry it the rest of the way. So I don't know exactly what is causing that, but I will give you a piece of advice. There is a seal around the uh, rod locker and on my boat, for what reason I don't know, it was installed. It was a complete piece of rubber that went all the way up to the front of the rod locker and then it had a gap in it this far and it was allowing rainwater to go from the front of the boat down through that gap into the rod locker. So once it's in there, it can shift over to uh, either one of the storage lockers on either side of the boat. So I think that's what was going on there. So I turned that around. So that's the advice is if yours looks like mine does and it has a gap in that rubber seal, turn it around, put the rubber seal down on this end and if you keep your boat stored for any amount of time, you're probably parking it with the front up in case there is any water in it, it can drain. And so that will take care of that issue. It has for me so far. As far as, uh, let's see all the issues that I mentioned. Let's take the camera and we're gonna kind of just look at these issues one at a time. If you recall in one of my first videos, uh, we looked at the mount here that holds the boat this is still loose, but it may be loose left to right, but it will not come up. It won't shift up and the, it has never been an issue. So I'm not worried about that. The one thing that I do see that's worn out, which I think will show up in this pretty well, is this is busted finally after three years and I need to replace this roller. I don't think that's gonna be a big deal at all when I do that. In fact, I may make a video of that because I have a feeling that's probably somewhat common and people probably wonder, how do you replace that with a boat on here? Do you have to go to the lake? 
what do you do? In the case of my boat, it's actually light enough that just a small block of wood here uh, behind the roller should be able to prop the boat up long enough for me to take this off. So whenever I do that, I'll definitely record that. I think I showed some of these last year. A couple of these have gotten worse. I can see a few, few here, there, there. And I need to actually get some paint and repair that now. It's been long enough. And I'll probably make another video of that just to kind of show you how I do it. The other thing is this trailer came with what is called the vault, the vault bearing system or the vault hub. I can't remember what they call it. But what that is, is just the way that the grease is maintained inside here to keep the bearings nice and lubricated and to make all the bearing seals uh, last forever, to make the bearing itself last forever. And I found out, for one, this is actually pressurized. The grease that is inside of this has just enough pressure on it that it pops this cap out. And you can push this in, though I don't want to do it. When this is flat, against the outside of this. If you should ever walk up and see this and it's flat with this surface here, it's not sticking out, and you have this uh, vault system on yours, you need to get this looked at. If you don't want to do it yourself, you need to do it because something's not right. This should be extending outside. Hopefully you can see that. I can't get quite of a good angle on it, but mine is sticking out a little bit. And if you don't see that on yours, you may want to have it looked at before your bearings go bad or something worse than that can happen. What happened was, uh, the reason I know all this is because the inner seal of the bearing went out on me and I realized I had all kinds of grease on the frame of the uh, trailer that I didn't know where it was coming from. So that is what that was. The uh, inner seal went out, so I did have to pull this off and I did replace the inner bearing and race and then I had to repressurize uh, this vault system. And so I did that. Okay, so I'm walking around the boat trying to think if there's anything else that has gone wrong. I did add a little decal to it. Shameless promotion, I know. <laughs> but I did want to talk about some of the upgrades that I made and why I've made those. Um, I did upgrade, if you notice this, in the last, I think it was in the first year review, I probably talked about how the boat was configured. Uh, maybe I need to watch my own video because I've forgotten <laughs> what I said about it back then. But it originally came with a 24 volt trolling motor that was um, a 70, I think it was a 70 pound trolling motor, but it was nothing fancy. I did upgrade this to the Ultrex with the iPilot link on it. And that has been a game changer for me. I had never owned that before on a boat. So I'm absolutely thrilled to have this on this boat. It's a 24 volt, 80 pound thrust, and uh, it keeps this boat exactly where you want it to. So upgraded that. I finally added electronics to the front of the boat. Um, I added a Hummingbird 10 inch unit here to go with it. And that has just been Again, night and day different. Now I can just stay up at the front of the boat. So this is a great size for this size of a boat and I really like it and recommend it. Let's talk about the carpet. The carpet has held up extremely well. Still very happy with it. I've caught a lot of fish. It's had a lot of junk on it. It's had fish scales, uh, catfish goo, and it has just really held up well. But basically just wash it off really good with a uh, brush. And when I'm washing the boat is usually the time that I'll try to also wash the carpet off a little bit. The window here still looks exactly like it did the day it came from the uh, factory. Uh, I did upgrade this unit. You may remember that I had a 7-inch unit there. I swapped that specifically to a 15-inch unit so that I could divide the screen into the two or three things that are most important to me. This does not matter. This is not the boat itself. Nothing that I'm talking about with this or the Ultrex or the unit on the front of the boat have anything to do with the boat itself. I do want to point out a couple of things here. The trim gauge on this has started acting up a little bit and I haven't diagnosed that because I really don't care. I, I go by how it feels and how the boat feels to me about where I need to trim up or trim down. So I haven't worried too much about it. And I don't know if it's the gauge that's having an issue or if it's the motor having an issue sending the level of trim. RPM gauge still works fine. The uh, fuel gauge works perfect. The speedometer, it works off and on. And as you know, everything related to the speedometer is basically just a hole on the front of the skeg that takes water in and it pushes it up through a tube and comes up here in a pressurized system tells this thing how fast you're going. It's not super accurate anyway. In fact, mine was always reading three to five miles an hour faster than my boat was actually going. So I was kind of disappointed when I took a GPS and found out my boat's not as fast as I thought it was. I did remove the seat 
out of the middle of the seats here so that I could walk from the front of the boat to the back of the boat uh, easier without stepping on a cushion and without worrying about tripping over that seat. One of the things that I mentioned on this was how this wheel, now it's gonna be very hard for you to see this in this video, but this wheel actually sits at an angle. It does not sit perfectly straight up like you would think it would, it sits at an angle. So what it actually ended up being was when I had to work on that hub uh, to get the grease back inside of it and put a new bearing in it, I got to see the spindle on this thing and the spindle is welded at an upward angle as opposed to being straight, which would make the wheel perfectly straight, the spindle kicks up just a little bit. Over time, what that might do is cause that tire to wear a little bit more on the inside than it does on the outside. So far, that's not the case. These are the original tires that came on this. No issues, no flats, no problems there whatsoever. Trailer's holding up pretty good. So I guess your last question might be, would you buy this boat again if you could do it all over again? I might, but I also might get a slightly bigger boat because what I'm finding after three years is that this boat is absolutely perfect if you don't need to run down the lake really fast if you don't fish tournaments and you need to blast off and outrun all the other boats this is a great boat to buy it's um it's not an entry level boat it's a notch above that but it's a notch down from your big fiberglass boats with tandem axles with your 200 horsepower motors on them I absolutely love this boat. I would buy it again, absolutely for certain, if I was in the market for another aluminum boat. There is one more thing I want to mention about this, and that is the last time that I checked, Triton is no longer making aluminum boats. They've gotten out of that market. And the only bad thing that I can think of about that is they're still covering stuff on these under warranty if you have a warranty. But the one bad thing about that is if you go on their website and you try to find information about this boat, it's limited or non-existent because they don't sell aluminum boats anymore so that's kind of a bummer about it but other than needing to work with them to get this dang seat replaced <laughs> uh everything else has has been perfect i've not needed them for anything so i hope you've enjoyed this review uh it's probably shorter than the others and i don't want to sound so repetitive this boat's incredible i would recommend it again if you can find one used with low hours on it i would absolutely recommend that boat you might want to get the engine checked out at a at a shop to make sure everything's okay with it. But the boat itself, I have nothing but positive things to say about it. So I hope you've enjoyed this review uh, as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the boat and want to ask those, please put those down below in the comments. I'll gladly answer those. I try to talk to everybody who comments on my videos. Hope you all have a blessed day. Good luck, tight lines you all. I'll see you soon.